Hey, Brian from Snake Bites here. Today we're gonna get a little geeky on you and talk about taxonomy. You're watching Snake Bites. Taxonomy is a classification system that we use to classify all plants and animals. It comes from the Greek word taxis for arrangement and nomia for method. So essentially it just means an arrangement method. Now most of us are familiar with genus and species. Taking for example, this ball python is a python regis. This motley boa is boa constrictor. This Pueblin milk snake is a Lampropeltis triangulum cambelli. And this corn snake is a Pantherophis guttata guttata. But I don't want to just talk about genus and species. I want to look at the entire taxonomy system. Now there was a mnemonic in school that helped me learn the order of the classification system. It was King Philip could only find green shoes, which translates to kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. In snake terms, kingdom would equal animalia, phylum chordata, class reptilia, order serpentes. Now that we know all that, I want to spend some time talking about families. There's primarily five that encompass the snake trade, two of which are venomous, the viperidae that include pit vipers and rattlesnakes, and elapidae that include cobras, mambas, and Australian elapids. But back to my collection, the non-venomous animals, there's really three families, and that would be pythonidae, boidae, colubridae. All right, guys, now that spring's rolling in and it's getting warmer outside, means you can go outside and do things. I'm personally really looking forward to going on bike rides. Chewie's looking forward to sitting on his porch and drinking beer. I wanna know, now that it's warming up, what do you guys wanna do outside? Leave a comment below and let us know. Although boa and python seem extremely similar, and some people actually believe they're one family, the truth is there's two families, boidae and pythonidae. Now there are a tremendous amount of similarities, including they have two lungs, whereas most snakes only have one lung, and they both have vestigial appendages called anal spurs. The difference is, is that boa's anal spurs are much longer in males than females, and you can actually spur sex those animals, where you can't do that with pythons. Also, so boas are ovoviviparous or live bearers, whereas pythons have eggs, and most boas, with the exception of a few species, are from the Western Hemisphere. This is my girl, her name is Baby. Believe it or not, she's Satan's sister. Certainly has a much different disposition. She's absolutely awesome. But she's a python, and there are some very big differences between pythons and boas. First and foremost, the majority of pythons are from the Eastern Hemisphere, with a few exceptions. But also, they have a post-frontal bone in their head that boas don't have. They also have extra rows of teeth. And trust me, being on the receiving end of these types of python bites, I can attest that means a whole lot more puncture marks. They also are viviparous, which basically just means they lay eggs as opposed to having live birth. And lastly, they have right here on the front jaws, they have heat pits. And those heat pits are basically used to track prey in the dark. They're truly amazing animals, but those are the main differences between boas and pythons. Certainly when it comes to boas and pythons, they comprise some of the largest snakes on the planet. But a lot of people don't realize that there are a lot of small species of boas and pythons. Take for instance this adult children's python. This is as big as they get. And she's probably only about three and a half, maybe four foot. And this little baby snow Kenyan sand boa is part of the boa day family. And that's it. You're looking at maybe 12 or 14 inches. So not all boas and pythons are monster snakes like a lot of people think. And finally, the colubridae family. Things like this albino goini. Now, colubrids make up two-thirds of all snakes on the planet and can be found on every continent except Antarctica. What's interesting, too, is they can be both egg layers and live bearers. And when it comes to my collection, colubrids encompass corn snakes, king snakes, milk snakes, rat snakes, and garter snakes. I'm not a nerd when it comes to most things, but when it comes to snakes, I can definitely geek out with the best of them. Man, Brian has been talking about nothing but classification all week. Boas, pythons, colubrids. You know what we should do? We should have him classify who has the worst bite. Like between the three of them? Yeah. We can get Chewy to do it. 
But he's a big, big baby. All he does is whine about everything. He'll say they're all bad. We could get Nick to do it. That'd be funny. The perfect new guy initiation, getting bit by a bunch of crazy stuff. Give us an idea of what has to do with There we go. Let's go find him. Cool. Nick! Huh? I need you to come over here. Uh, okay, what for? Just come, come over on. here. Hey, Chewy, we need you for an experiment. Your experiments, no. Yes, come on, it's not gonna be that bad. No. Chewy, it's about taxonomy. Well, I did my taxes, experiments, and they, no. No, you idiot, taxonomy, classification. Yeah. It's all scientific, you wouldn't understand it's it. Scientific hey. experiments means Chewy get hurt. It's, it's BHB classification. Well, come on. Classify we're gonna, on. We're gonna have Nick too, Nick involved. Yeah, it'll be both of you. Nick's gonna do it? Yeah. I love Nick, let's do it. All right, guys, what we're going to do is a BHB classification. We want to know which of the three families of snakes bites the worst. So each of you is going to take a bite from each of the different types of snakes, and we're going to rate it. And no, 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 get your butt back here. The first snake is going to be this Colombian rainbow boa. Oh, an elbow bite. All right, new guy, you're up. Okay. Get in there, Nick. You don't look so bad. Come on. Come on. Did I get you? Yeah. Wasn't that that bad? This is the next snake. We're going to use a black rat, a albino black rat, colubrid family. Go. Oh. <laughs> don't bite me. Don't bite me. Don't bite me. Okay, that was a good test, good test. Okay, get in there. All right, all right. Ooh, I think we got a guy. Did I bite you? Yeah. You sure? Do it again. Wow, you're strong. <laughs> okay. Sure, babe. All right, guys, the last snake is going to be a python. So you use this lovely green tree python. I know you guys love her. Good luck. Oh. Look how pretty. pretty. Oh, you. Oh, me. Which one was the worst, Chewy? This green tree python, because it just snuck up and <laughs> baby in the arm. <laughs> okay. Maybe you. All right, what about you, Nick? What was the worst? Eh, they were all pretty much the same to me. I mean, nothing really hurt. Ooh, none of them hurt? Yeah, none of them really hurt. Okay, none of them really hurt, Nick. Well, what do you think? It seems that our test subject said that the python was the worst bite of them all. Well, they do have that extra row of teeth. It's probably why it hurts the most. So, the verdict is the winner of our BHB classification Python bites hurt the most. For this week's Common of the Week, the question was, what are or what were your plans for spring break? And the Insomniac 99 said, I'm no longer in school, so sadly I don't have a spring break. However, my girlfriend is a teacher and is leaving me here to work while she goes and visits her family. Joke's on her, though. While she's out of town, I plan to purchase my first snake. You know she's going to be back, right? Speaking from a man with experience, they always find out. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the show and got a chance to learn a little bit more about how taxonomy works with reptiles. Make sure to follow us over on Facebook and Twitter at Snake Bites TV. Until next time, this has been Snake Bites.